A train collision, video games, and President Kennedy are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is September 12th, 2022. It is the 255th day of the year. There are 110 days left. It is the 37th Monday in the 38th week and the 84th day of summer. You got 10 days left until fall. And after the weekend we just had, I'm so ready for fall. It was like 95 degrees here in the Portland metro area. It was so bad that they actually cut power out in the wooded areas because they're afraid of down power lines just sparking up a major fire because we got wind and we got heat. Today is National Video Game Day. On September 12th, National Video Game Day celebrates all the ways we enjoy a good video game challenge. Video game players across the United States enjoy this day with much enthusiasm. From the very earliest days, video games have blended an art form and an industry. Video games are amazing. We all played board games as a kid, and really the people that started the original video games were just trying to play board games on a computer. I'm 55 years old, I still play video games. Some of the best times I had in the army were tournaments in our barracks and our old Sega systems, football games, and like 10 of us playing a tournament. It was so much fun. All right, let's see what else September 12th has given us. 1609, Henry Hudson begins the exploration of Hudson River. 1814, the Battle of North Point, an American detachment halts the British land advance to Baltimore in the War of 1812. 1857, the USS Central America sinks about 160 miles east of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, drowning a total of 426 passengers and crew, including Captain William Hurden. The ship was carrying 13 to 15 tons of gold from the California Gold Rush. 1940, Hercules power plant disaster in the United States kills 51 people and injures over 200. 1953, U.S. Senator and future President John F. Kennedy marries Jacqueline Lee Bouvier, definitely one of the best first ladies we ever had. Their marriage happened at St. Mary's Church in Newport, Rhode Island. 1962, President Kennedy again. President Kennedy delivers his We Choose to Go to the Moon speech at Rice University. 1994, a man fatally crashes his single-engine Cessna 150 into the White House South Lawn, striking the West Wing. There were no other casualties. 2008, the 2008 Chatsworth train collision in Los Angeles between a Metrolink commuter train and a Union Pacific freight train kills 25 people. Now, this was a big deal. I remember when it went down, actually, a good friend of mine, she's a paralegal. Her firm had something to do with this. And it was years later, she told me all about it and how it was just a nightmare. So the Metrolink commuter train and the freight train usually passed each other. The normal situation was that the Metrolink train would stay in Chatsworth until the Union Pacific train got there. For some reason, the Metrolink engineer didn't do that. He took off. Normally, by the time he's supposed to take off, the freight train has already gone by, but they are delayed and trains sometimes fall behind schedule that happens. So this guy takes off as if the freight train had already gone by. Well, he passes a warning red light that tells him not to go onto the single track. He just blew past it. They figure he didn't notice it. There was no gate. There's no derailment thing. There's nothing to switch him over. He just got on the track, started going about his business. Now, during the investigation, they found out that there may have been a faulty thing. It, they weren't really sure, but they think that the signal may have given the wrong light. The engineer had died in the crash, and they figure, you know, that may have happened. They're not really sure. What did come out of it was he was texting. Right before the accident, he was texting a young rail fan in the area that likes to watch trains go by. This, I guess, was a kind of a common thing. Or not common, but they like to communicate with each other. There's a whole little community online of rail fans and things like that. In the end, the deaths, the accident, and everything was placed squarely on the Metrolink engineer. In October of that year, the Rail Safety Improvement Act was passed by Congress and signed by President Bush. Now, this gave them till 2015 to get all these different safety things in place for all the different rail companies. They still had some other accidents and one major one in Philadelphia. So they extended the deadline for them to get all this on board, and that was signed by President Obama, moved the date out to 2018. Turns out Metrolink in Los 
Angeles was the first rail service to have PTC, which is this anti-collision alarm system, fully installed on all their commuter trains. 2011, the National September 11th Memorial and Museum in New York City opens to the public. Now, a couple years ago, I brought this up on September 11th, uh, and I brought up a couple other facts. That video is still demonetized because I brought up September 11th. This one might be as well. But it's one of those things, you just got to bite the bullet, and you have to mention everything about September 11th. I mean, kind of what we got to do as Americans. Premiered on September 12th, 1978, Taxi. This was one of the greatest sitcoms ever created. It won won 18 Emmy Awards, including three for an outstanding comedy series. This was a great series, and it was centered around a New York City taxi company and their drivers and their abusive dispatcher who was played by Danny DeVito. It also had Christopher Lloyd, Rhea Perlman, Jeff Conway, Tony Danza, Judd Hirsch, the late great Andy Kaufman, Mary Lou Henner, and Carol Kane. If you ever want a good laugh, just put up Reverend Jim gets his driver's license on YouTube and watch that video. It's one of the best things that was ever on uh, a sitcom. It was just great. The series aired new episodes on ABC from 1978 to 1982, and then it moved to NBC from 1982 to 1983. Didn't last that long, but it was a great show. Born on September 12th, 1957, Hans Zimmer. He is a composer. He's a film composer known for his work in more than 150 films, including The Lion King. He's also known for having a lot of collaborations with filmmaker Christopher Nolan, working on Inception and the Dark Knight trilogy. If you don't know who Hans Zimmer is, I'm sure you've heard some of his music. And if you're a teenager of the 80s, I guarantee you've heard some of his music. He was in the new wave band The Buggles during the later part of the 1970s and appeared appeared in their music video, Video Killed the Radio Star, in 1979. That, by the way, was the first video ever played by MTV. He was born in Frankfurt, Germany, and he is 64 years old, or 65 because it's his birthday. Died on September 12th, 2003, we lost Johnny Cash, known as the Man in Black. Cash became one of the most influential musicians of the 20th century, inspiring artists in various genres from country to rock and roll. Before fame, he began singing at the age of five while working on his family's cotton farm. He was very close to his older brother, Jack, who was mortally wounded in a saw accident. He married Vivian Liberto in August of 1954, and after their divorce in August, of 1966, he married June Carter Cash in 1968. Johnny Cash died of complications from diabetes around 2 a.m. Central Time on September 12, 2003 at the age of 71, less than four months after his wife. He was buried next to her at Hendersonville Memorial Gardens near his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.